Hello, viewers, or should I say, hello, ween viewers. I'm your host, Fright Z Croshaw, and here's my colleague, Gabriel Deathton. <laughs> That's not bad. I, I th isn't Morton like something related to mortuaries or death? Or oh, something? probably. Well, the word you were given last week was. Um, father. So you chosen to play Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. How yeah. literal minded of you. Oh, well, there's, there's, there's more than just the literal to this. Um, this was also a game Dad bought me for my birthday when I was about 11 or 12. Well, that's not a theme inherent in the game, <laughs> is it? Well, no, but Fathers is a theme inherent in this. All right. Well, it's just so if we go there's, by... There's multiple levels. Well, it's just if we go by that rule, then I could... You specific any bloody game, couldn't yeah, I? Yeah, I could say, it? I'm going to produce, uh, like, the word I was given was artichoke. I'm going to play Half-Life because I once ate an artichoke while playing it. You can, go, you can you do anything at that point, can't you? You said when you picked an Indonesian... What was the relationship between the Indonesian game last week and Answer again? You answer a phone prominently in a cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> At least okay, that's well, present that's in the game. Right. And, yeah, and then you criticize me for picking Gabriel Knight's Sins of the Fathers. I'm criticizing you for picking it because it's related to fatherhood for you personally and no well, one else. No, there, it was two things. I said there was two levels to it. Well, why'd you even mention the other one then? Because you bitched about the literal interpretation of it. Okay, apparently this game isn't designed for widescreen viewing. Such madness. So this is, a, of course, a remake of the original yeah. low-res Sierra adventure game. Yeah, the, the original that I... Oh man, like, this was my, one of my early tragic experiences of PC gaming. Because I had all the things that the game said I had to have. I had the recommended settings and all the recommended shit. And I'm like, this is going to be great. And I played through it and I got to the end of day six. And then it just hit this weird, like, sound card error. And then it just wouldn't work. Oh uh, yes. The PC gaming crapshoot. Yeah, I mean, that was what it was like when you were, like, young and didn't know anything, you know, and Google didn't exist. Um, we can skip this Well, bit. this is a bit presumptuous of them, thinking <laughs> I want to know who made it at this point. Well, actually, let's give up, because this, I'm actually quite impressed with it. A lot of extra work went into, um, the 20th anniversary well, edition. Well, it it's seems just... like. There's a brief glimpse of the Nintendo DS version. <laughs> That'd be, more adventure games should be on the, the DS. Well, there's a few. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Lydia so, yeah. Sim Simchich. The game's Martin about uh, um, in her name. The roguish uh, author Gabriel Knight researching a book for um, uh, that he's going to do about voodoo murders. Were you attracted to the game as a child because his name's Gabriel too? Well, yeah, that and it's a Sierra adventure game that had like this big thing going. You know, it's a fucking adult novel that's you know it's really deep and interesting. It's got a writer and stuff like that because that was how they used to. Pedal games like this back then. Yeah, I wish they'd go back to that. Gabriel Indeed. Knight's basically sort of New Orleans U. I, I mean, I the new... Ad uh, if you say so. Yeah. I mean, new adventure games, they always sort of seem to have this air of we've invented adventure mm. games about them. <laughs> like L.A. Noir. It's like, hey, we've, we've uh, innovated so hard in inventing adventure gameplay, we don't even have to come up with an original story. It's just going to be Noir, the game. <laughs> yeah. Just look at all the innovation. There's investigation and you don't kill stuff as much. Investigation. You walk around and click on things. See how innovative we're being. Has there ever been a game that's had to, you know, in your mind, actual detective-y kind of... Um, like, any sort of genuine, like, you figured something out? Well, one game that comes to mind is Jack the Ripper on the Commodore 64, where you had to figure out who the killer was by highlighting sections of text and linking them together. Yeah. And pointing out there, this, therefore this, therefore this guy's Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Although it was kind of primitive. There That's was an the element of like randomization each time you played. That like different person was Jack the Ripper. That's kind of cool. I, I, apparently, I didn't play much of it. Well, at least it's like you know that's mm. there's a uh, I. Well, I do like that sense of, I figured something out. Like, as opposed to just, I clicked on everything and then clicked everything on everything else. Well, that's what I was going for with Consuming Shadow, of course. Hmm. Like, the organic adventure mechanic where you have to... Where the, the invading god is different each time and you have to assemble clues to figure yeah. out which one it is. When are we getting to play that, Yachts? We've got to when it's, ballpark. When it's done. Okay. I had to do some overhauling. Okay. After, I did some testing and I needed to do some overhauling. I tried. I've been, I've been nagging him to get it finished. I think it's, I think it's quite a good game. I'm working on it. <laughs> It'll be even better. It'll be great. Trust me. Yahtzee Crucial Super Director's Cut Edition 2015. So, so I guess what we're looking at here is the Grim Fandango style 3D characters on a 2D backdrop. 
arrangement. Um, yeah. But uh, just significantly less blocky than a mm. Grim Fandango. Whereas the original Gabriel Knight was just pixels. Cool. Very low res. Yeah. Classic uh, Sierra sort of style graphics. But uh, yeah, so here we have like a nice big pretty 3D thing. There's mm. all the voice yep. acting and stuff. And I figure we can try and solve this mystery together, Yahtzee. There's you, who's Jamie Lannister. <laughs> He's cropping up in a lot of games lately. Like, the dude from Evil Within is essentially Jamie Lannister. If you say so, he's exactly I'd, I'd say like he's him. essentially Dirty Harry, but okay. Well, no, in appearance, he, his face is um, also like that dude's face. I think that might just be Jamie Lannister looks like Dirty Harry. I think it's going back a bit further. Just, there's one magical set of cheekbones from here stretching back through to infinity. Well, it's just you know standard handsome face man, <laughs> like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, used just to amazing be. cheekbones. Like Clint Eastwood used to be before he melted. Yeah. And like, so yeah. Now we can. Did you did you ever do things like this when you were younger? Like I kind of used to play co-op like adventure games. So we'd sit and neither of us had played the game, and because the gameplay is not really you know pointing and clicking, it's and we try and nut out the ideas together. And no, I didn't really play any games with other people because I had no friends. Oh come on. Well, I didn't play that sort of game with them. All right. Although I guess sometimes you know, if I was just having a play date with someone, we'd just. Play date. We just play a game. We didn't really go as far as making it a thing. Oh. Sat, sit down and work out a game together. We were just sort of passing the time before the grave, really. <laughs> it's Although nothing. it's funny you should mention it because Zork Grand Inquisitor actually had an online mode where you could yeah. play. Well, you, two players would be playing the same game, mm. and you'd sort of like nut out the puzzles together. But there weren't like two characters in the game. You'd you just like warring sides of the same personality. So, sort of like the multiplayer mode in Katamari Damacy. <laughs> but anyway, where are we? Let's look at this box we've yes. got. So yeah, we want to look at the box, okay. Yes, let's put our hand on it and test for vibrations. Okay, so now we have a sketchbook that we can examine. Did you, when you were a kid, did you ever try walking around the house pretending you were an adventure game character? So you'd walk up to a shelf, stop... And then, like, from an arm by the side's pose, you'd reach out, grab something, put it in your pocket, go back to the pose, and then reach into your pocket, pull it out again, and examine it. That is fucking ridiculous. Well, yes. I, yes. Didn't we all? <laughs> exactly. Maybe not to that exact degree, but, like... Or pretend you were an FPS. Like, you, like you, you, wouldn't turn, you wouldn't turn your head, you can only turn your whole body, and you'd hold something in front of your face so it appeared in the corner of your vision. I really hurt my neck once, so I've lived that. <laughs> I just, I can't move this, so now it's just torso. I felt a bit like Robocop. Uh, it's, fun to, to, it's fun to discuss these little embarrassing things that unite us all. <laughs> I like, think you mean, yeah, I, I bet a lot of people have done that. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet they did. That's a th I mean, the fact that both of us have done it. All right. Well, yes. Click on that newspaper. Alrighty. Well, we're both lonely oh, wow. neurotic spots, let's not forget. <laughs> sad, sad, sad people. With shitty childhoods. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, nice uh, skeleton animation on that skeleton. The Newspaper, I mean. Mm. This narrator embarrasses me. <laughs> Potential <laughs> storms ahead. So yeah, we've got some stuff, like my dad was a bit nuts. Uh, voodoo murders at terrifying residents. Well, of course, naturally. Yeah. See, I was played a lot of Sierra games, but the Gabriel Knight series was the one series I didn't play much of at all. I'm afraid. Right? That was all about the space quests and the king's quests. Didn't play this one much at all, really. I think um, I played through it once. And I don't remember much about it. Well, I, I mean, as much as I loved the quests, I think Gabriel Knight's probably my favorite, just because it wasn't loaded with bullshit, you know, sort yeah. of fake deaths. And do you think there was pressure to re rename it something like Voodoo Quest? <laughs> Probably. Um, the sequel I know is an FMV game, and the third uh, one is kind the of Beast Within. I think. Uh, yeah. Wasn't the third one the one that inspired that old man, that famous old man Murray article about the death of adventure games, where you had to get a piece of cat hair and stick it to your face in order to impersonate someone who didn't have a mustache? So you'd have to draw a mustache on their passport. Yeah, probably. That wouldn't surprise me because that game was fucking. In, it, that game went apeshit with the fucking adventure game stuff. Yes. Yeah, the whole. Uh, what? Is that is this game much like that? Um, some of it's a little, a lot of it's fairly reasonable. There are some genuinely complex puzzles in it. Like, there's one point when you have to work out sort of a a drum beat code that you just sort of you just have to work that out. Okay, I haven't Which, really been following this. Brain. I've just been talking bollocks. Oh, so, such is the nature of this. So, do we have a quest yet? 
Um, well, yeah, I've got to... Basically, I've... Grace has messages for me, because she's my employee. Yes, I remember and that. She's so, your secretary come love interest. Yeah, I'm going to go over and talk to her, and she'll give me some little tasks that we've got to do for the day. A highly resistant love interest, I should add. <laughs> oh, my God, you have the face of a lady. You are Brienne of Tarth. I thought you were Jamie Lannister, and now you're Brienne of Tarth. <laughs> I've got the stubble, too. Yes. Yeah. That's hardly stubble. That could be just be a shadow. <laughs> a five o'clock shadow. A five a.m. shadow. A noon shadow. Whoa. Actually, uh, Grace looks a lot like someone I know. Who? Oh, you don't know. Uh. Someone I know in the local games industry. Ah. Uh. And, oh, Jesus, your teeth are frightening. <laughs> See, they sort of switched from the 3D models to Two, um, yeah. sort of like 2D with just a bit of stretching and squeezing going on. And I think that might be losing something. Yeah. A bit I, of the uncanny valley going on there. The, kind of the way they, 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 they move in that weird, that stretched total way. Like everything's kind of oozing and shifting. Yeah. Especially with the... It's like I once saw like some like animated porn where they took a what well, had obviously been a still once. image, and I used to see this a lot when there used to be a lot of like porn flash games and stuff. <laughs> like they'd, they'd um, take thanks, still, Newgrounds. they'd have like st- they puppet things like paper dolls. Yeah, you, like all the limbs were individual working and like, it, images, and it always looked rather <laughs> rather strange. Well, yes, there's a lot that goes into animating a face, mm. as the uh, La Noire people discovered. I still like the L.A. Noir faces. Well, they kind of sacrificed the game on the altar of that pedestal, didn't they? I mean, uh, the rest of the characters' bodies always looked like fucking stick men. Yeah. They'd had to reduce the complexity of those to fit in the incredibly highly animated faces. So yeah, my mum called. I've got to go around to seeing her. A German um, guy called, and yes, I have to go. Yes. yes, I remember that bit. You're, uh, you're basically uh, like a part of a, a long le- legacy of demon hunters or something yeah good old grandma you're like new orleans john constantine there really it's it, he feels very constantine except with long girly hair constantine's hair's been longer but not probably not that like not that feathered or wavy well when you think of like the quintessential image of him yeah well, it's not you're not really thinking of no. that whole phase when he was living in the hippie commune. <laughs> that was a fun phase. So now we've got some tasks, so we can go explore Yay, them. Yay, a job to do, a quest. I didn't a even thing. I didn't register what they were, but I'm taking your taking your word on this. You're going to make a great partner in problem solving. Great. Happy to help. Yahtzee's helping. Um, what was your favourite of the Sierra Point and Clicks? Um, Space Quest 5, maybe? Yeah, good choice. I mean, that, uh... That was one with Stooge Fighter, wasn't it? No, it was Space Quest 6. Was it? No, it was 5. 5 was the immediate predecessor to 6. It was the one where you were the captain of your own ship, and uh, there was actually elements where you could command your crew from various different things, and there was Uh, sort of a bit of organicism to it. You could explore the... You could... uh, Organicism isn't a word. (laughs) It is now, Yahtzee. It is now. Make it one. What's the noun form of organic? Hmm? What's What's the noun form of organic? That's the adjective form. What's the noun form? Um, it mightn't have I mean, one. The quality of being organic. I'll look it up. I'm curious well, now. That's, that's not. Let's not worry too much. No, but I'm, I, maybe it is I, organicism. I want to learn words. Me learning. Well, maybe it is organicism then. Oh, we could like go anywhere in the universe and do whatevs. It was one of the inspirations for a game I made once called Adventures in the Galaxy of Fantabulous Wonderment. Hmm. Where I tried to marry adventure game elements organic. with like yeah. space exploration stuff. Um, yeah, so yes, we're going to go check for Mosley, who in the original was voiced by, um, uh, oh god, what's his name? Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. He got around. He also voiced voice the uh, villain from uh, Full Throttle, Fact Fans. <laughs> that was a good game. Rip Burger. Yeah. And he basically just did his Joker voice again, because that's his villain voice. But uh, a little bit lower and with a nice bassy slime to it. Somewhat. That game had some bullshit in it. <laughs> Full throttle. Well, yes. I mean, all those uh, mini games. Yeah. Always a bad idea, I found, to try to put action mini games into adventure games. And yet they still do it, don't they? Because uh, 
video games are the art form with the shortest memory in the world. Always having to scrap the backwards compatibility, aren't we? Cast more memories to the flames. I apologise if I sound bitter. <laughs> What's making you bitter, Yahtzee? Has something done that recently? Uh, not really. What, what's hurt you? The games industry generally. Oh, okay. Because I had to play another exclusive Xbox One game this week. Oh, what was it? Shanchet Overdrive, of course. Which I will be reviewing soon. Yeah. Not this week, or next week. Actually, maybe next week. Well, let's not make promises that our... <laughs> Let's not make promises our arrows can't keep. Let's see who gets that. I don't. Um, yes. So they seem to be like very faithfully replicating the 2D backdrop so far, from what I remember of the game. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're all new and prettier. Like, the originals are fairly Yeah, but they're, they're faithfully reproducing the layout of the rooms as they were in the original um, 2D yeah. backdrop. Yeah. The um, same, like, although camera, there are a, same I, I, camera angle and shit. That's where the, uh, the alloy was not there. But so basically, we need to get a hold of Mosley, because he's got information about like some of these voodoo motors that are useful. Did we mention that in the original, the main character was voiced by Tim Curry? Um, no. Well, in the, the original. Perhaps, perhaps we should have mentioned yeah. that, yes. The science says the it, he was. Well, now, there's a versatile actor. There's an actor-actor. It's, like, uh, it's like how people like Gary Oldman are an actor-actor. Like people who yeah. can, people who aren't don't just always play the same role in every film. They can play whatever you, you ask them to play. Yeah, Gary Oldman can be um, Jean Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg and um, Commissioner, Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, and, and have his... it believable. And they're so insanely different. Like put the mustache on him and act, have him act slightly befuddled, and it's just it's a it's a and, friendly uncle. Yes. And Guildenstern from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, and suddenly it's turned into The Sims. I notice. I haven't watched that in ages. Yeah, so this is probably... Okay, this is the first dumbass adventure game thing. So we're trying to find the um, location, so... Well, we've got no fucking hurry, apparently. <clears throat> no. Um, oh, apparently someone wants to wants to feed us their fist. No, uh, that's, how, that's, how, that's related to the problem, so... Oh, how generous of them. Yeah, so... The police radio is calling for an ambulance to the murder scene. Oh, boy! we can't listen to the police radio because the cop's there. How would you go about distracting that police officer, Yati Korshaw? I would murder someone. Then while the policeman is over investigating that murder, I would listen to his bike radio. Brilliant. Simple. Logical. I'd, now, I'd throw a brick through a window somewhere. I'd set off an alarm. Just, okay. That's the because, usual thing to do. All right, well, that's... You're just being crazy. The obvious way is to lure a mime over to him. Okay. Oh. Uh, this oh is, no. Yeah, this is the puzzle. There are two people walking around that will otherwise distract the mime. Bastards. Yeah. But perhaps you should murder them. <laughs> I will kill you. Leave me alone, you, you, you man. That is a female character in a video game. We, we made that clear. Come back here, mime. Ah, oh, he scoots back over to his fucking dimension of origin. Mimes are great, aren't they? I love mimes. I think they're great contribu contributors to hum the human race. I think they're the only things below professional wrestler on the art roll call. Okay, so now he's teasing the big buff dude. I don't know. Mime uh, takes a lot of discipline. No, I'm just teasing. I actually knew a guy who... He was another, he was another security guard, of all things, who had graduated a uh, university with a drama degree and had majored in mime. They, so he, he was working he as a security guard. He majored in mime. Yes. That's, that's, I'm not even fucking kidding. The thing is, though... My name's Ronnie Syme, and I majored in mime, and I would love do it. amazing fucking routines. <laughs> like, he'd fucking kill us. I'm trying to improvise this. My name's Ronnie Syme, and I majored in mime, and I get punched by bigots all of the time, and and I like to eat my lager with an ice wedge of lime, and uh, I'm now doing a monkey impression, which is technically a crime. There it is. American police summed up. <laughs> yes, how ahead of its time. <laughs> Prescient. Look, look, we speeded up a walk animation. <laughs> Was it obvious? <laughs> so now the cop's going and I'm presuming just beating up an otherwise innocent mime. Is the buff guy and the lady sort of looking for each other? <laughs> like they're like blind dates? Just, yeah, it's a I'll just up. walk around this statue one more time and if I don't see him... I'll be the one threatening the mime. Yeah. Well, damn, that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> so Jesus. now we have the location, and this is how we find the location of the... Which, obviously, we are fully entitled to go and look at. 
because we're question mark. What are we? We're a bookshop owner? Yeah. Okay. And our friend's the detective. We'd better investigate this murder <laughs> in case some books need to be sold <laughs> to someone at the crime scene. Excuse me, miss. I work at Subway. I'm going to need you to answer a few questions. Thank God you're here, Gabriel Knight. There's a shortage of books. <laughs> Quick, how would you narrate this scene? Isn't that cop supposed to be going to the murder scene? Nah, he's just chilling. They don't need uniform at a murder scene. No, of course not. Alright, so now we have, like, the uh, Greater New Orleans map. Because people get murdered all the time in New Orleans. They don't have the rubbernecker problem. So people mm, just go, uh. All the rubbernecks get slit. Hey, look at me walking straight through the police <laughs> yeah. tape like it ain't no thing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I've seen five episodes of CSI. Can I help? Oh, look at me. I'm standing perilously close to a bloodstain. <laughs> I'm probably in- interfering with it as we speak. You weren't, like... These footprints around the murder site weren't important, were they? Because I just walked through, like, eight of them. Oh, I see. He's writing a book. Well, that's, all, well, that's okay, yeah. then. It's not like anyone can write or publish a book these days. It's okay. I have to get my hands all over this corpse. I'm writing a book. Yeah. Well, I say I'm writing a book. I'm going to start yeah. taking notes gonna... any day now. Yeah, any minute, I'm going to get my laptop out at Starbucks. Why are you trying to bring this gun into the presidential debate? <laughs> I'm writing a book. I'm allowed to. Yeah. Or if you're a teenager, I'm doing a school project. A school project. It's a social experiment. Okay, a car pulled up. Yep. Probably got the police lieutenant in it, and Mosley's going to be in so much trouble. No. Uh. Jesus, your proportions are weird in that picture there. <laughs> you look like the spitter from Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, it does a bit. Yeah, it's like the comic artist and the overall, like, it's it's like all three artists who worked on the game didn't talk. Is it me, or is Gabriel Knight's hair a bit shorter there than they were in his yeah, usual thing? Yeah, I don't think any of the artists discussed how they were gonna... Nothing quite like the stench of rotting corpses in the air to put us in the mood for romance. <laughs> Look at that dead guy, huh? You are wet yet? Yeah, yeah, I know you are. How did we suddenly get around to this side of the scene, Mosley? Are we, on, are we on some kind of merry-go-round? <laughs> yeah, it's a new thing they build at crime scenes so you can get like a full view. Yes. A corpsey go-around. Could we turn off the fucking ma- magic roundabout music, please, Steve? <laughs> Music's not helping. Music's Stick not around helping. this corpse and take notes for your book. Oh, they're taking the corpse away. Yeah. Stick right. around these bloodstains. Yeah. Touch them. Yeah. Them. Go and touch them. Run, get your hands through everything that might have fingerprints on it. Rub it on you, it's good for your skin. I guess maybe they've already worked the scene. I'm gonna hope so. I, yeah, well, you gotta hope so, haven't you? Uh, they haven't even put those little folded bits of card with numbers on. How do I know what to click A on? Or is that just what? Or is that just what they did in LA Noir? So you wouldn't walk around looking at cigarette packets all day. <laughs> and I love how occasionally in LA Noir they'd like let you look at a cigarette packet that had nothing to do with anything. So it's like, nope. Yeah. Well, Bit otherwise, you know, you'd instantly know something was important to the case by virtue of the fact that you could pick it up. It's still, you know, it's I red earrings. It was, that. you know, it's like explorative gameplay, exploration and discovery. That's one of the one of the. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the most sturdiest mm-hmm. legs on the gameplay table. I mean, I mostly enjoyed LA Noir. Still haven't okay. gotten around to finishing it, I only just got up to like the bit where you play as the other dude. Well, it kind of engaged you that much then. It was probably safe to stop at that point, actually, because uh, <laughs> that's where it kind of gets shit. Okay, so there's sinister marks on the floor, standard uh, yep. fictional serial killer MO. Ooh, mysterious tracks. Which the police didn't notice, because they're twats. Yeah, because they're not authors. Of course not, they don't, they don't have your observation powers that comes from being an author. Reminds you know, me of the fantastic show uh, Look Well that only got one episode but was brilliant. It's like all those detective shows on TV. It seems like everyone other than police officers is given some strange advantage for some solving crime because of their job. <laughs> A magician's assistant? Solve crimes. Solve crimes! Coroner solves crimes! Everyone not involved in solving crimes? Solves oh, crimes. Super sleuth. So yeah, I found a snake scale using my science glass. Crime scene investigator solves cr- Oh wait. There should be one about like, I used to play adventure games in the 90s. I can solve any crime in 15 seconds. And the detective puts a hand over the cop saying, It's alright. He played adventure games. <laughs> yeah, it's alright, man. 
Imagine be Police Quest 3 without an FAQ. Fake psychic solves crimes! Ice Cream Man solves crimes! Miami CS Ice. Criticizes video games for a living, solves oh, crimes! Man. We should just wonder, uh, there's not really many crime scenes that happen in Brisbane, I suppose. Maybe his eye for terrible game-breaking gameplay decisions will make him realize there's one mistake the killer made. Yeah, every time. You're the unskippable cutscene of murderers. You know, Grace, I am your employer. Perhaps a little respect is in order. So help me God, I'll fire you. And then you get it to do some research for you because this game came out before the internet. Yes, that was a quaint time. It was weird. One wonders what the culture of 20 years from now will be like when no one remembers a time when there wasn't a, an immediate resource to all the information in the world. Everything. It's so amazing. The, the librarian stock character mm -hmm. will be gone. Yeah, it's like you had to get her to go look at books overnight. She was your Google and that took like 12 hours. That ladder goes up to the upper floor because we don't have stairs. They broke. Yeah. It's like some weird balcony area that he t plans to turn into a cafe, but the floor's all busted. Grace has got a fat butt. A bootay. Baby got back. Mm-hmm. Does your anaconda want some? We are misogynists. We mm -hmm. are everything that's wrong with video games. Yep. That was day one, was it? Right. Yes. Uh, all right, good day's work. Annoyed a policeman. <laughs> looked at the floor. Fucked up, fucked up a crime scene. <laughs> fucked up a crime scene. I Get have a snake scale. That's useful. Annoyed my assistant. <laughs> off to bed. That's everything off the checklist. Yep. Bucket list complete. And poorly animated dream. Because, I mean, it's not like there's a load of, like, loose pythons in Louisiana or Florida at the moment. He's got a Robert Zadar chin, that guy. Who's Robert Zadar? A man with a very large chin. Excellent. What's he from? Uh, various films. Fair enough. B movie actor. He was in like Maniac Cop. <laughs> oh god. Is that like a street sign or an advertisement? I have not thought about Maniac Cop in a long time. Drink bourbon. It's good for you. Yeah, bourbon. Delicious. Yeah, we saw this already. Yeah, but they got a recurring nightmare. It's building uh, drama. Blah de blah. Have you ever thought about doing sort of a more, you know, going back to some point and clicky stuff? You know, I have thought about it. It'd be fun, you know, it's all narrative. You just get to tell the story then. And oh yeah, people slap seem some to like puzzles it. in. How would you do puzzles different? I'm interested because you know, my impression of point and clicks is if the problems are, have a logical solution, then it's not hard. So how would I mean? What what, what how would you balance a, a sensible puzzle system? against the kind of difficulty. Well, I have played around with like gameplay models with more sensible puzzle uh, systems. One idea I had was to basically base it around a tool set. Mm -hmm. Like you got a tool set, say um, a wrench, screwdriver, length of rope, pry bar, scissors, basically anything that could do like a wide range of things. Right. And then um, you can find all, like all of those tools anywhere, which can also all, and they're all like all the puzzles require one of those items. Uh -huh. But you can also pick up standard like objects around the place, and all of and all of them have like scores in the different tools sets that they can serve as that tool in a limited fashion. So you can use it to sort of partially solve the puzzles that require the actual tool, but you might require more of them. All right. Okay. So like. If you needed something pried open, you could you either could, find yeah, the crowbar, yeah. which would do the job perfectly, or you could do... Or you could use, like, a wooden spoon, yeah. which might break, so you'd need to use another wooden spoon to finish the job. See, I'd like something like that. So you could, like, do the dream web thing, where you could pick up anything in the house, yeah. and then you could sort of improvise solutions. That was, that was, my, that was my thinking. Hmm. Uh, might have to, like, do a proof of concept to see how it worked out. Because it might, might be almost too easy. That's yeah. I mean, that, that, that's that's the problem that I keep hitting in my head is how then do you balance that with an uh, actual fucking hard puzzle? Well, it doesn't always have to be inventory puzzles, does it? Well, no. I mean, that's what I mean. You could expand it into other areas, but well, uh, well, if you're just doing like a game based on exploration and discovery, you might as well just do a hidden object game. Where you have to find um, pixel hunting, the one clue yeah. that makes sense in the crime scene. The old, the old thing used to be. The one thing I quite like is the dialogue puzzle. So where you have to select the right piece of dialogue, and if you get the right one, the game goes, good job, but if you don't, you can just try again. 
Like, um, what well, I mean, kind of kind of how Condemned Two did it, where you looked at a like a splatter on the floor and you got a choice where this looks like someone was dragged through here, or someone lay here and bled out for a while, or blah blah blah. And you just used your observational skills to figure out which one's right. Oh, okay. I, I kind of like that. Um, that is actually interesting because then you're having to actually look at a pile of blood and it's like, did it look yeah. like someone was dragged through that? No, then it wasn't the fucking answer. Murdered soul suspect kind of did that, but didn't really take take it as far as it needed to. Yeah, I saw that it was on like, sale and I was umming and ahhing about buying it. What do you think about it? Um, well, I kind of like the investigative stuff. A lot of it uh, was, my problem was I tended to overthink things. Yeah, so that's whether, right. whether like I was being cleverer than the game was. In yeah. other words, it was saying like, "What is the most relevant fact that you've assembled from looking at this crime scene?" So you got a, your list of facts, and I thought to click on. I mentioned this in my review. I thought that what they meant was to click on um, uh, the, the the victim was killed with their own gun. I thought that seems the most relevant because it means the crime wasn't premeditated. Mm. But the game then the game went eh, wrong. What was it then? Well, the most relevant fact was there was a murder. So, as I say, overthinking <laughs> was the problem there. I thought you were going to say over... Yeah, that's... Huh. <laughs> that's pretty funny, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean... That's, I wouldn't even think that's... that's yeah, it's fairly that, simple fucking overthinking. That's not like you went, oh, you know, yeah, get the, the fucking big board out and tie things together with strands of, like, coloured rope. I mean, most of the puzzles were just, like, stupid easy, where the solution was, like, in the exact same room as yeah. the problem. That's a shame. And uh, they threw in this bizarre... Like pseudo combat mechanic, where it came <laughs> to they thought they had to liven it up by having you sneak up on evil ghosts that had nothing to do with anything, and it was so out of place and it was so misguided. Dramatic, isn't it? Interesting. Yeah. Why would they do that? Why would they do things? This narrator is Saki. <laughs> She's a sassy Creole woman. Of course. Can't do that. Oh, my God. Terrible fucking version of a fat old Creole lady accent. Norlands. Norlands. My main understanding of that area is Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's a, that's a good basis to start on. But I only really liked Nick as a character from that game, and he wasn't from New Orleans. He was a, he was a drifter. Healthy drifter. Ooh, I can go to the Voodoo Museum now. Great. Welcome We're solving crimes. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. Hey, it's Tony Todd. Who's Tony Todd? The guy who played Candyman. Ah! Oh. Why is there a drummer right outside the window? Is he deliberately trying to piss people off? <laughs> and what? I just happened to choose the place directly under your place of business. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, it's a public <laughs> thoroughfare, man. Do, 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 do. He's the I'm not touching you drummer. Well, just I can try close. What I can practice at three in the morning if I want. Do, 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 oh, it's a baby casket. How yeah. grim. And uh, the Shatner mask from Halloween at the top of the screen there. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Shatner, how's it hanging? The shape. The shat. As they called, as they cast them. Hey, one candle is obviously a different colour to the rest of them. Is it important? Oh. Guess not. Is it even a, is it a candle? That's a blue herring. That's, that was weird. It so, looked to... like, it so looked like it was important because it was such a massively different colour to the rest of it. This game's reasonably sort of... Good with not just being that basic. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo. Bird, 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 bird. Yeah, now we need to start uh, discovering things and talking to people, and it'll highlight things that are sort of a little more plot relevant. Like well, you get modern, fluff for talking everything. Well, I know else. that like, the modern understanding of voodoo is about as far removed from the original African voodoo thing as one can possibly get. Yep. It's a very open, um, uh, sort of, kind of. An oddly whatever. open religion, like it just absorbs stuff. Whatever it is, yeah. You know, in as much as it can be described as... Yes, many different African tribal religions and blah de blah de blah it's, it's the religion for everyone, it's got a bit of everything. I always think when people talk about, you know, uh, how a religion was made up, it sort of undermines the whole thing, because aren't we supposed to be genuinely believing these gods exist, and yet we're admitting that we made them up? <laughs> it's like how the Romans took all the Greek gods and changed all their names. If you genuinely believe the gods existed, that seems like it would piss them off. Religion back then was peculiar. I don't think, you know, I sometimes wonder if we've just misinterpreted as religion what was basically superhero comics for the time. 
there was an awful lot of that to it, pretty much. Like, yeah. you know, Hercules was just that, and that you know, the the age of heroes to sort of the Greeks and whatnot was. Essentially I've always like, thought if there was like a global volcanic eruption now, and our civilization was rediscovered, perfectly like preserved, like Pompeii, several thousand years from now, they'd probably assume Spider Man was a local god. <laughs> Pray to Captain America. Yeah, look. I mean, look at all these uh, imid- all these uh, fetishes we've made of Spider-Man and Batman. And it's, it's it's the same process with a slightly different mentality behind it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's because again, it's kind of interesting. There was very little in the way of understandable atheism or agnosticism back then. Like, if you people didn't say the gods didn't exist so much as that they were powerless or didn't care. Yeah, I mean, you could. And I like, mean, you could sort of accept that. Yeah, because they were so polytheistic. The idea of other people, because that—that was the idea. Was the, the Greeks and the Romans just basically assumed they'd been worshiping the same gods, right? And that you know that there was just a, oh yeah, That's obviously it's the mind. same dude. Like, and the Egyptians have this version of this guy, and you know, he's their death character. So obviously, it's the same god. It's just appeared to different people in different ways. So what I liked about those old religions that there, there was no obligation for gods to be benevolent they could just be fuckers if oh, they wanted oh, mostly fucking jerks our gods are fuckers and that's why life's shit I like that attitude <laughs> yeah. but in modern times since there's so many religions there's this element of evangelism now so everyone has to say yes our god will look after you if you come and join yeah. us he's a good yeah, god. Yeah, god has to he's be nice if he does something bad to you you must have done something wrong he doesn't yeah. have to tell you what it was original sin you're all born horrible and you get kicked in the nuts for it if you have to ask you'll never know <laughs> Yeah, old timey faiths are, are kind of fun. I I I really enjoy the plurality of it, where it's just yes, your gods exist, but just our gods are better. Yeah, I mean, that might as well just uh, get down to that level. Play God top trumps. <laughs> well, we our armies defeated your armies, therefore our gods have to be better. Yeah, obviously, oh, well, we're least... both praying to our respective gods. We won. Yeah. yeah. Ipso facto. I guess we know who's pulling the wedgies up in the paradise realm, yeah. don't we? Zeus represent. Well, even then, like, see, Zeus had different forms, so there'd be the Zeus of the Agora, and, like, so each god had, like, different facets and um, different bits and pieces, so the idea of, you know, again, the, the, the polytheism was really just so open that you just didn't get the kind of clashes that you do these days where it's got to be like, there's one god and one interpretation. And then there were the Elysian Mysteries. I uh, never know about them. Well, I think a lot of uh, evangelism these days is driven by people wanting to sell themselves as having the answers. Saying, everyone else is shit. We're the ones who have the answers. Listen to us and give us all your money. We have white Jesus. He's awesome. Yes. Looks obviously, like Obi-Wan. Obviously ours is right, because it feels right. And obviously it feels right, like because we're just telling you what you want to hear, aren't we? Every Mormon pamphlet Jesus looks like Obi-Wan. Yeah, of course you're the God's chosen people. You're you. <laughs> Who wouldn't choose you, you beautiful, fat, stinking twat? That's actually one of the most important things about sort of modern religion and how it works and what it provides is you can be a horrible, terrible, meaningless, ugly, stupid, it doesn't matter. Religion will like you. There is community yes. and friendship in religion, and they just don't well, get that in anything else, com- really. That's what it all comes down to, isn't it? It's forming groups, yeah. deciding who's the outsider. I'm getting perilously close to referencing current debates on the internet, but I will not. So tap you, get you over the edge, poke, see what happens. No, I'm weathering this storm by staying on my little desert island, thank you. <laughs> Um, I think you go well. I, I, I could see you in like a uh, an unmanned or you know, an, an abandoned oil rig or something. You're just out there with like tinned food for 40 yeah. years. I'm just on the top of the oil rig in a deck chair and a pack of cigars. Like in Forrest Gump. Okay. Well, you know, I wasn't they managed to go out. And, well, not, not that exactly, but they managed to survive like the storm by just drifting out into it. And then he tied himself to the top of the mast. Mm-hmm. I'm going to flip this switch. Turn that thing off. Uh, oh. Does that turn the fan on? Yeah, and it makes your snake go ape shit. Is that is a snake made of paper? Is that why? <laughs> yeah. Because that, that was the impression I was getting from the animation there. I know. So what did we learn from this incident? To this, um, this extremely long conversation I didn't pay attention to for a moment. <laughs> Just some stuff about local voodoo, some bits and pieces, some hints of what to do. So basically there were snake tracks and there's a snake. And because it's an adventure game, those two things are directly related. Wait, the first thing you do is show someone a snake scale. Is this Blade Runner? <laughs> I'll be going. Come back again. 
Um, because that was that was, I mean, I'm remembering that right, aren't I? The first yeah, clue in Blade Runner was a snake scale, mm. and they had to like because of the whole plot of that thing is about artificial animals. They had to trace the manufacturer. I have seen things. Oh, I gotta watch that movie again. What's? Do you have an opinion about uh, the director's cut versus the original, or that how he made a new one with like even new footage? Not really. I mean, I've watched it a few times, but I'm not sure which cuts they were. Ah. I mean, I know the opening, the one with the opening monologue by Harrison Ford was kind of dumb. See, Dad loves that version because he loves the goofy noirness of it. Because Harrison Ford really sounds like he doesn't agree that this is necessary. <laughs> he, he sounds like he's putting on the dullest performance he can manage. To be fair, have you ever seen Harrison Ford interviewed? Like he on really, a Tonight Show? Like, he really doesn't seem to like people on interviews, does he? Like, every time, I swear he's like fucking high as shit. And not on like weed. <laughs> yes. The last time I think I saw him on, it might have been Conan or something. He was rocking back and forth, pulling his lips back and squeezing his knees, which to me says pills. Or he's just anxious on camera. Yeah, that's, that's a possibility too. Apparently, he I mean, yeah, he's. I mean, I mean, he's a fine actor, but uh, maybe when he's not acting, he feels vulnerable. I can understand that. I mean, um, there's a lot of people who like erect personas in their professional life. Erect. <sighs> Do you like how, do you do, I mean, you know, I know you have a fascination with masks, does that, uh, do, you, do you feel comfortable when you can sort of be the internet Yahtzee out in the world, or? Well, I once went to a party in my morph suit, and I had a great time, once no one knew who I was. That's your, doesn't your voice give you away a little bit, though? Well, I didn't talk. Please tell me you were at a party with your morph suit silent for the entire time. Well, it was at a party at my house that my housemates were putting on. Okay. And they knew it was me. It was just... Um, just a, okay, so they knew it was you and you, the people well, you knew well, were the there and you didn't talk to them. Well, at first they knew it was me, but then some more people arrived who didn't. So that was when the fun started. <laughs> I respect commitment to that degree. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. <laughs> I do like... Yeah, I do have a... As a I have a sort of artistic fascination with masks and hey, I, identity a, cancellation. It's a fascination I share. We had that big discussion about what was the most organically frightening mask. That's why I was really into the Jason films. Yeah. Sort, of a guilt, sort of a guilty pleasure of mine, really. Yeah, yeah. fun's fun. And so, the I mean, Halloween films, of course. Yeah. I love this whole concept running through Halloween of Michael Myers as this sort of force of nature who's like... Uh, sort of his all his entire identity is cancelled. They, they they call him the shape in the credits. He's just a mask. He's just like a the unstoppable force of evil wearing the thin facade of a man. Mm. Oh Jesus! Why does everyone look old that you talk to? Because I absorb their youth. Look at me. I'm getting younger. Younger. Between your cleft chin and that uh, and your pronounced. Uh, dent in your upper lip. You look like you've taken an axe to the face. <laughs> it does, yeah. These full lips. Yeah, those lips are a bit swollen from that axe wound. Mm. They had to reconstruct me. Don't make fun. Yeah, but, yeah, it's those cheekbones, I think. He definitely has an air of reconstructed face about him. Maybe he bot botched plastic surgery. Yeah, I guess he does. The more, the more you look at him, the more plastic surgery he, he, he looks. Mm. <clears throat> Um, so how about those upcoming games? Yes. Uh, not much that much uh, gaming news at the moment because we're currently in the middle of a chain of big releases. We've gone through uh, uh, Alien Isolation, Shadow of Mordor, Evil Within, Bayonetta 2, uh, Sunset Overdrive, and this week it's going to be Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, of course. Hmm. Which Now with Kevin Spacey. Which I imagine will probably just be gun wang shite. But <laughs> hopefully it... Uh, Come on. Hopefully it won't be as racist as it's been in the past. <laughs> well, Kevin Spacey is the villain, and he's like super rich white man the yeah, third. Yeah, it's getting back to PMCs as the as the fallback enemy for modern shooters. They're a good There was choice. a rather ugly time when there was always, you know, brown people. <laughs> the browns. Or Russians. I mean, admittedly, Russians might make for a better enemy now, because they've been kind of becoming more evil lately. Ah, uh, good old Putin. Maybe that was <clears> the <throat> fault of the modern warfare games. Yeah. Russians have goes, well, if that's our image anyway. <laughs> uh, if, I've or if I'm already damned, I may as well take my prize. I always kind of can't take a game seriously if it's about America being invaded and conquered. 
Because who the <laughs> hell does that? Who's got the... I mean, that's the... What the hell could you gain from taking over <laughs> a country like America that's worth the cost you will incur for doing so? <laughs> Bragging rights. Uh... A whole bunch of corn <laughs> and land where nothing else will grow. One day we'll work out how, like, <clears throat> you need fat people to start, like, fusion engines. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the start, won't yeah. it? <clears throat> it just, we just need to shoot, like, some lasers through a fat guy. Yes. And it has to be specifically fat guys who've been raised on very poor quality chocolate. <laughs> so you can't just take the fatties from, every, from all over the world. No. Gotta be that gross stuff. Um, yes, you're in a graveyard. Mm-hmm. Well done. Yep. Uh, have we have we solved the murder yet? Um, no, I don't think that was even the goal in the first place. We're just we're just poking about, you know, fun, man. It's fun. Right. Just gonna okay. write down some markings on a a grave. Is this an alphabet cipher? Wait, five by six, thirty. Guess it can't be. No, it's. Uh... Oh, they remind Gabriel of crosses, do they? <laughs> Would that be because <laughs> every single one of them is a cross? Crosses. Yeah, I love that. Exit to tomb. Oh, go over here. That one's over here. Mm, stilted walk, stilted walk, boot uh, cut uh, jeans, boot uh. cut jeans. <laughs> He's breaking in new docks. That's the problem. Uh, what else is upcoming? Oh, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, the week after next. Um, which one's that one? The new one, French Revolution one. I wonder if everyone's saying, why can't you play a woman in the multiplayer? Alright. That was a fun argument. Yeah... Based on a misunderstanding, I think. Yeah. Because you know, every character is the same character. It's the it's the Watchdogs thing where you're always playing the same guy, but the oh, multiplayer yeah. is uh, like uh, occupying the same space as the single player. So it's seamless. Mm. So you're always playing the same guy. And uh, I'm Steve Dave. You're just other Steve Dave. But I don't want to dredge that whole argument up again. Dredge away. Wait, is this the game where every black person in town is in on the evil voodoo conspiracy? Um, every black person? Yes. Every last one of them. I figured it was. <laughs> it's, it's a plot to get revenge on the white man 200 years in the making. Using voodoo, yeah. the one true faith. The one that actually has the magic. So it's not quite a white guilt game, is it? It's you, white guilt is entirely justified sort of game. <laughs> White pride. And I white pride. And I define a white guild story as, uh, you know, Dances with Wolves, Last Samurai, Avatar, that sort of thing. <laughs> Last fucking samurai. Where the, where the white guy joins the uh, diminishing tribe and realizes their ways are better and becomes one of them and becomes the best of all of them because the they're white. Oh, well, you know, it's a natural advantage. Like, what was it Paul Mooney on Chappelle's show once had a great thing. I was like, you know, they got the Samurai starring Tom Cruise. They got the Mexican starring Brad Pitt. I got a movie for you, Hollywood. It's called The Last Nigger on Earth starring Tom Hanks. See, the morphing of the beard in the talking animation looks weird. Yeah. Because the beard moves around moving. around the mouth, but the beard around the bottom seems to be stapled to his chest. <laughs> Help. He's just, a, he's just a pod person. What do you know about snakes? Yeah, it's the standard dialogue tree pattern, isn't it? What do you know about X? What do yeah. you know about Y? What do you know about Z? I'm tired of talking about X, Y, and Z. Let's talk about A, B, and C. <laughs> Imagine if someone walked up and started asking questions about shit. Hey, what do you know about Brisbane? Well, I made this very joke in a zero punctuation once, as I'm sure the comments will remind you. I was saying at a party, uh, just for a laugh, try to talk to a stranger as you would in an adventure game. And tell me more about your new sound system you have at home. Uh-huh. What can you tell me about surround sound? What can you tell me about the concept of sound? <laughs> Noises. That was a lunge. Uh, yeah, that's that was a an amazing <laughs> lunge. It's a weird starting walk animation he's got there. <gasps> Gotta get our lunges in somewhere. Power <gasps> thrust! Hoppa! Yes, I'm the best at walking. <laughs> Gotta lock that back leg and project. Oh, wait, so the black lady has a white butler. How dare you invert tropes. Haha. -ha. Oh, I can talk to this guy. Yes, you're just staring at each other on the doorstep. <laughs> I wonder how long you can do that before they just walk away and shut the door. <laughs> yeah, do the selling encyclopedias line, because that's literally what you do. That is literally your job. Right. You sell encyclopedias. 
Encyclopedias used to be things before they happened to the internet. Yes. You had to buy, buy that you, shit. You had to buy updates of the encyclopedias. <laughs> and the encyclopedias were huge and they were expensive and they were mostly yes, kind you had of to buy new editions yeah. all the time. Soviet Union collapsed, better get some new encyclopedias. Here is a list of everything in the world. <laughs> and some vague information about it. Yes. Obviously not very in-depth. You'll probably have to find a specialist book at some point. Which means going to a library, looking through catalogue cards. That motorbike always feels out of place to me. <laughs> That's his bike. Yeah, I know. It just, just kind of looks like... Because well, it's not background art, I think. It just doesn't fit in. It's like a bad Photoshop. Like Maybe the lighting's a bit off. I want to talk to Detective Mosley. Of course you are. Hey, his name's Frick. Is that because Frick is a prick? Yeah. I think I understand the word play there. That's uh, that's what all the officers call him behind his back. Yeah. Although you know they kind of stopped since his wife divorced him. Yeah. They t- to his back. face they call him slick. <laughs> hey, slick frick. <laughs> Just death stares him back as I know that's not what you mean. Slick frick's got a slick prick because he's been sliding it in and out of dick. <laughs> Rhyming with Yahtzee. Uh, I'm going to tamper with a thermostat. Maybe I should write more poetry. You should. Ooh. Uh, do you hey, want a hey, or Gabriel, the sign clearly says don't touch. We will probably have to solve a puzzle before we can... Oh. I thought we'd have to distract everyone in the room before we... Uh, nah, nobody cares. <laughs> before we could uh, do that. Hey, dude monkeying with the thermostat. This is going to take three mime artists. we we'll have to call <laughs> them all in here. That's the... A mime is the natural enemy of the police officer. So it made, it made it hot, so now Mosley takes up his Hey, coat. Mosley, you don't actually have to put up with him. You could just tell him to leave, and then he has to do it, because you're a policeman. You shouldn't be in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not clear on what motivation Mosley has to, to uh, let Gabriel Knight do all this shit. He is a weak, weak, weak human. I guess. Well, why, why isn't like all the teenagers coming around and sticking... Like bubble gum to his forehead. Stop it, you kids! I'm a police Stop officer. It. Stop it! I'll call your dad. <laughs> I know your mum. Uh, well, another bit of news I heard this week is that Prey Two has been officially cancelled. Which oh. one was Prey again? Prey was the one where you're a Native American who goes on to big it alien spaceship. Like, yes. Yeah. I always I thought that was a pretty strong opening. That game had. Yeah. Game was a bit repetitive, but you know I had fun with it. How far through was it? What? Prey 2, how far through? Like, I don't know, I mean, there'd been some buzz at uh, conventions and stuff. There'd been videos and leaked stuff. Apparently those publishers just didn't think it was shaping up quality-wise, so they binned it. Huh. And I made a note of this because I didn't realise this, but the main character's name was apparently Killian Samuels. <laughs> He's got kill right there in the name. <laughs> insult him! Insult him! Okay, where is it? Or are you just going to discuss the subject of insulting him? No? Are you trying out for a janitorial job? Oh, that backfired, didn't it? I think we know who wears the trousers in this relationship. Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been. It's your stomach. I'll get you someone we're done talking. That long? What a what a bitch boy. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. I do... Okay, Gabriel Knight is clearly an alpha personality. Every... Like, this game more than any other one. You know how adventure games have the little noise when you do a thing? I think uh, that wasn't the case in every adventure game. It was certainly a Sierra thing. You you are such a bad friend. Yeah. This man is huh. just basically Terrible. your bitch. Oh, look at the crossfoot walk over And you're there. just exploiting him. I think I'll just... I'm, everything Gabriel Knight does makes me dislike him more. He's the Ferris Bueller of Sierra. I was admiring <clears throat> your coat, obviously. Yeah. I'm just going to steal your badge. That's not a big deal for a cop or anything, is it? I'm going to go around and pretend to be you for a while. That's not a big deal or anything, is it? Yeah, Prey was the game where you couldn't die. Where it was like, There's a lot of games that do that nowadays, but this was like a progenitor of that whole thing. Oh, so every, I, time I you, every time you died... You were transported to a fantasy realm where you had to oh, shoot yeah. bats for a bit to get your, bring your health and magic back. And then you'd be transported back and uh, no time would have passed. So there was kind of lost any sense of challenge. I mean, 
You can sort of see why designers thought in those terms. They were thinking, well, when people die, we save every two seconds anyway, so yeah. what's the point? But I think there really is a, a sort of impact to death, even if you are going back just a couple of seconds, which is lost if you're not going back any time at all. Mm. Which is lost if you're just coming straight back. Sort of makes you wonder why the villains are even bothering if you mm. are obviously immortal. Yeah, we just killed him and, oh, now he's back. Let's give up. Yes. It's, I mean, obvi- it's just a matter of time. It's, yeah. it's going to get through us. Or, None of know, us come back. Come up with some other way to get at yeah. him. Just to leverage him. Seal him in fucking concrete or some yeah. shit. Kidnap his girlfriend. Oh, wait. <laughs> How do you, like, because I've, there's you know, something about modern games with all the auto-saving and things like that, and then you go back and play, like, an earlier first-person shooter that doesn't do it, and you go, oh, yeah, consequences. Yeah. Like, what do you, do you think we should go back to something like that? Do you think there's a you know, benefit to sort of a little, you know, not being with the auto-saving and the checkpointing all the goddamn time? I don't know, I mean, I'm, co- I'm kind of into, you know, what's fairly wrongly called the roguelike style these days, where every time you die, you lose all your progress and have to start again. I like Dark Souls and stuff. I mean, I kind of like death having a consequence because then you're motivated to try your hardest. Well, yeah. I mean, Dark Souls, you lose all your goddamn souls, and that's fucking horrible. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate that kind of difficulty. Mm. Man, yeah. God, Dark yeah. Souls is just garden variety. Go fuck yourself but up. At the same time, the style of game where you can save at any time, but you have to manually save, there's no auto saving. Mm. That's kind of annoying. If you're going to allow saving at any time, yeah, might yeah, as well, well just auto save. Because people are good, you want you want people to be concentrating on having fun with the challenges. That you don't want them to also have to concentrate on saving all the time as well. Yeah, I think. So maybe auto saves with you know some kind of stat or item diminishment or something when you uh, when you fail. Uh, yes, possibly. Something sort of in that. Just make it so you don't want to fail. Yeah, well that's how I'm trying to. I'm trying to get at I mean, the punishment of having to go back quite but this, far. But at the same time, yeah. If you punish people too much, a game can become obnoxious. Yeah. Especially yes. if a uh, game's too hard. I mean, I quite like the Dark Souls model, because you, you die, but you can get your souls back. That and you come back quite quickly. Yeah. Like, it has that kind of almost angry bird thing. It's like, Beep. off you go again, champ. So how did we talk our way in here again? Oh, I used a detective's badge and impersonated a police officer. Oh, of course, because yeah. that's not totally, totally illegal and... And we'll get you thrown in jail. It's not going to get my friend in trouble either. <laughs> Whose badge it is? Why are you such a bastard? Why didn't you give these clues to the police? Does this mean anything to you? No. So wait, you're just going to write your book and publish it, and then the police will read it and go, "Oh, I guess we should probably arrest this guy then." Hey. And then I went in and stole the police officer's badge. What? Then I pretended to be a police officer. Yeah. How how. I'm fucking cool. No, they can't arrest me because statute of limitations. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. That's a thing. I read that. Yeah. I mean, it's been at least, what, a month? Yeah. That's like fucking ages. That's fucking ages. Yeah, that's it. This is distracting. She looks like Black Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> that's a fantasy of mine. Yeah, she kind of looks like... I mean, she doesn't really have the facial proportions of a black woman. I mean, that sounds horrible. I mean, black people have, like... black enough for you, Yahtzee. I'm just saying, you know... It looks like they just darkened the skin of a uh, of a Caucasian woman. Creole. Lots of uh, intermixing. Oh, I guess it's more mixed race then. Because yeah. you know, black people have, you know, they have thicker lips and uh, like the wider noses. A common Negro seen here. What? They do. <laughs> I know, I'm just, I'm fucking with you because you know that people are going to like, go, the, the Mongol cannot compute maths because of the slope of their brow. I mean, I look at her, she looks, she's got that sort of black but not too black thing, like the sidekick in Resident Evil 5. What do you know? I don't know. I've heard of her, of course. But that's it's like how you get those um, uh, albino guys from Africa who are like completely white and have freckles and red hair and then yeah, I mean, have entirely this. African features. Yeah, those, those are weird. What kind of things? Poor buggers get like murderously harassed because people think their bones are magic yeah yeah well yeah, that's the that's the issue <laughs> imagine that being part of your fucking day i have to hide so people don't take my femur and i don't know perform a spell with it well what else can you do join the freak join the traveling freak show in 30s america <laughs> uh better life than not being in the freak show in 30s America I suppose no. and 
Uh, top half is not a lot of jobs for you. Well, at least you're part of a family unit. Although these days, I read an article once about um, in Hollywood you have stunt gimps. Which is the term yes. for like the people who are missing an arm and then yes. they... Yeah. Probably not that PC a term. Uh, the, the word I've heard used in various circles for it. Well, the term I've heard is amputee actor. <laughs> Stunt gip sounds more fun. Yeah, like, if I lost an arm and was in a thing like, you know, here's this is the scene, Gabe, we get your arm ripped up, I'd be like, cool. Yeah, there, was a, Stunt gimp. there was a Stunt Gimp nay amputee actor in Shaun of the Dead, as I recall. I remember them saying on the commentary. Yeah, um, yeah well, I mean, I've seen... Like, there's a guy who's basically just a torso who does horror pranks. Yes. Uh, have you ever seen... We were talking about Silent Running, like, ages ago, as a film I'd seen recently. And they hired uh, amputee actors to play the robots in that film. I think it was, like, a couple of legless guys. They just, like, moved along on their hands. Yeah. Well, this is what this guy does. Like, the elevator opens, and there's just, like, a zombie in half, and... You know, the to- the, it, it's a separated torso, so there's like a lower half and a top half, and the top half has some like intestine trailing down. And the guy freaks out, and then of course the top half dude gets up and moves like fucking lightning, just chasing after this guy. I've never like I wouldn't have thought that someone who's you know missing their legs could move that quick, but I suppose he got less well, weight you, to carry well, you get, and you're used to it. Well, yeah, if you're used to it. It'd be kind of interesting. I mean, seeing him do I mean, like indoor with, rock climbing with, or something. I've seen like videos of people with no legs moving. I mean, I mean, because they don't have all that weight, yeah. they can go like the clappers. Well, that's something I've thought about. Like, I mean, what happens if your legs get cut off, Gabriel? What would you do? Well, like, oh, upper body stuff, I suppose. If I'm going to have something cut off, I'd rather it be the legs because you know, arms are a bit more. Yeah, arms do a lot of shit. Arms need to be dexterous. Yeah, I mean, you can learn, I think, leg dexterity, but that's a fucking uphill battle. I mean, I don't really like dancing anyway. I'd yeah. like to replace my legs with caterpillar tracks, essentially. <laughs> I want you to fulfill that dream. And then I'd roll into Tank rooms Yahtzee. and talk like um, Davros from Doctor Who. <laughs> would you release the virus that would kill so many people, Yahtzee? Yes, I would do it. <laughs> I would have that power. First. Have to get her to cooperate first. So. Her okay. okay, let's so. get her to cooperate. I will touch her. Actually, that brings us to one of our uh, viewer questions talking about disabilities. If you had to choose, would you prefer to be deaf, blind, or mute? That's from Simon. Um, mute. Would you mind really? Yeah. A few more questions? Okay. Dude, I can, I mean, you, well, I understand. Well, you're yes. out of a job here, then. Find somebody else. Um, you, I understand. Your business is, you know, kind of built around talking, but... Yes, it's what, one of the things I'm good at is speaking. Yeah, but I mean, dude, like, would you really prefer to be deaf or blind over that? I reckon I could get used to being deaf. Yeah, well, deaf's I, off. They have deaf's the second choice. Well, actually, I already am partially deaf. Oh, really? Yeah, I got uh, diminished hearing in my right ear. Huh. And I've always worried about... Like, I had a teacher once who broke their eardrum in playing sports. And I've always been haunted by the notion that maybe that would happen to me, like a freak accident, but it would be the, the, my good ear. So I'd be stuck with my bad ear. Hmm. I mean, my bad ear is bad enough that I should probably, you know, think about a hearing aid. Really? Yeah, because huh. I got a hearing test done once. I had to get an MRI scan, actually, because they weren't sure there wasn't, like, some kind of tumour pressing on my oral nerve. Jesus! I already heard about this. This is interesting. But well, I mean, hearing aid technology is remarkable these days. I mean, yeah. You'd be a cyborg. <laughs> Cyber Yahtzee. Well, I'm already a cyborg. I wear a watch. <laughs> yeah, but this would be like something actually implanted in you. Well, not really. It'll just be in my ear. No, oh. oh, no, the, the, I suppose well, they are you different. You can take it out. Well, they have the cochlear ones, but I think that's for a different kind of hearing. I'm, a, I'm technically a cyborg in that I have a silver crown on my tooth. Huh. Well, I guess that's not like electronics, is it? No, that's just a, you have a lump of metal in you. Yeah. Would you get a body mod, like if it did something? Oh no, look, you're coming clean. What will happen? Oh, just bored. <laughs> just, uh, just piss partner out. Yeah. Go around. You got a nice house. Yeah. You're pretty. I want to touch you. So I pretended to be a police officer to get near you. Why are you running? I'm researching the book. <laughs> Always the excuse. I'm researching the book. My book is going to contain a section on the inside of your pants. <laughs> Whole two chapters. Yes. Perhaps we should uh, continue this research in the bedroom. <laughs> Why are you running? I only pretended to... But I reckon I could get... I reckon I can, like... You know, if you're deaf, you know, uh, you can just 
Does read, like, just get by on reading subtitles and stuff. Yeah. It's a much, much easier than being blind, I think. Well, yeah, blind would fucking blow. Yeah. Because that's a, I mean, it's not saying you can't get by in life, but that's a big adjustment. Like, you yeah, have to, you'd have to become like that kid who can get by with sonar clicks. Braille, like, you'd have to learn Braille. Yeah. Um, you know, I, mean, you I have a no problem a with stick. Again, like, I do, I do mute, because I can just, you know, write shit down on a piece of paper and so like I most certainly uh, did, I guess you rubbed her up the wrong way. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have thought, like, felonies would do that? <laughs> See, there's a point where lovable rogue just becomes menace to society, doesn't it? I think that's, yeah, that's one of those ones that's getting creepily close. How far, how, how long have we been doing this for? We've been doing this for an hour and five minutes. Oh, Jesus. So, right. if there's some natural conclusion you can bring this to, maybe you lean towards that. Um... It's me. Might be getting near the end of the day. I can't remember. Okay. Too. Well, go to bed then. In the meantime, I will pick my next word. Word, word, word. word For word, this word, one, word. I'm using a, 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 a book compilation consisting of The War of the Worlds and The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Two of my favorite books. I'm quite a fan of Victorian pulpy sort of stuff. Always preferred Wells to Jules Verne, don't you? I think Jules Verne sort of gets caught up in the science and less in the fiction. It depends on what you... I mean, I, I, I appreciate both, but I get why you like Wells a bit more. Because, yeah, he's he tells a story. Whereas Verne is like, here's my ideas! I stopped reading 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea because I was like halfway through a 10-page description of how diving suits work. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Let's just find an octopus to kill. Right, say when. When. Alright, I haven't finished the day yet. When? Weed. Awesome. Weed. From the sentence, For a space I could not understand it, and then I knew that it must be the red weed from which this faint irradiation proceeded. Yeah, I think old Wellesie was getting paid by the word. <laughs> Weren't they all, almost, back then when they were writing for newspapers? Like if they'd... Yeah. I mean, Love Lovecraft was for Call of Cthulhu, I know that much. Not <laughs> um, Call of Cthulhu, um, Australian, um, Mountains um, of Madness. Exactly. Two Australian authors. Mountains of like Madness that. is wordy ass. <laughs> but yes, weed. 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 Well, plants versus Four zombies it is then. Blaze it. <laughs> or not, because I just mentioned it. Glad you could return. You always want it to be a secret. Uh okay, you're gonna talk to this dull motherfucker again? Well yeah, this is a well, I haven't finished the day and I haven't been paying like a hundred percent attention. Okay. So now you do that thing in adventure games which is go to every location and see if anything is different. How about we not do that? I mean, what have we got? Five minutes left? Well, we could end it now if you want. Yeah, I suppose I got some stuff to do. Let's. Oh, that's awesome. Someone's outside swearing. Did you hear that? Yeah. That I heard was that. great. <laughs> Let's end in the spirit of the holiday with a rendition of the Halloween theme tune. The what? I'll do the tinkly bits, you do the you do the chords. You know it better than I do. Do you know that bit? Can you do that? I don't know the chords. Well, did you do anything for Halloween last night? No. Neither did I.